Hey y'all, Linux Focus VTuber, Amelia Marriage, M for short, and today I'm just going to go over the basics of how to use Gentoo's Package Manager PortEdge. So we're going to start by looking at the make.conf file, which is where you set a lot of just global settings for building stuff, so like global use flags and compiler flags and all. So as root, just point a text editor to slash etsy slash port edge slash make dot conf and just put in a password and first thing we're going to be looking at is common flags so that's just flags that you want to pass the compiler regardless of language so no matter whether you're building something in C, C++ Fortran for whatever reason, that's where the stuff that's shared goes. So first one I have here, dash capital O to optimization level 2. This is the highest optimization that most packages support by default. If you want to go higher, there's an LTO overlay that you can add. Then dash pipe tells the compiler to use pipes instead of temporary files for communicating between the different compilation stages. Then I'm pretty sure for my use case having mArch and mTune both set to native is kind of redundant, but generally mTune is the processor type that you want to optimize for, and mArch is just the lowest kind of processor that you want supported by stuff you build. So the only reason that you would need these two to be different from each other would be if you have just one build machine that's building for multiple other machines. And C flags and CXX flags. C flags are where you put C specific compiler flags and CXX is C++ specific ones. So as you can see, I don't really have anything special for those, just the common flags. And FC flags and F flags are Fortran 77, I think, and modern Fortrans respectively. Yeah, so you're probably good not really touching those at all. Then make ops. Generally you'll want dash j for jobs and then the number of CPU threads you have. I set mine to three instead of four just so I can be really sure that my potato laptop will still be usable enough while I'm installing stuff, but yeah for maximum build speed set that to the number of CPU threads you have which is usually just physical cores times two. Then CPU flags x86 or there are a couple other variants I think like PPC and Spark maybe but x86 for most laptops and desktops is just the special instruction sets that your processor can support and the package that you can install to check this is app portage slash cpu id to cpu flags and i'm going to be sure to put that on the screen but then once you have that installed just cpu id to cpu flags and then you can pretty much just copy paste that in so then these are a few just default directories for different things and log levels and where to log to. I haven't really touched those but they're worth noting if you want to put any of those someplace weird or if you want more or less logging than default. Then next one worth looking at is Gen2 mirrors which is just what mirrors you want to download source files and all from. And this is separate from the mirrors for syncing package lists. I'm not going to touch on those because I don't actually remember how to set that, but the easiest way to get those 
is use the mirror select command dash i for interactive and o for output and you can pipe that directly to this file if you're running as root i'm not actually going to change that i'm just going to show how to use that so i'm going to page way down to usa then from here it's arrows to move around space to select so i'm just going to select a few random ones and then left and right to go between ok and cancel cancel if you decide that you don't actually want to change this ok and then if you didn't direct this to the make.conf, you can just copy paste it in. Then emerge default opt is the flags that get passed to the emerge command by default, as the name suggests. I have ask and verbose set, so ask, it'll ask you before installing anything, and verbose adds a lot of extra info to the output, so like, it tells you use flags and such. This is a very useful pair for beginners to gen to, and the exact opposite of useful if you want maximum build speed. So set those accordingly. Pretty much any option you can find in the man page for emerge can be set here. And then. Next up is use, which is just global use flags. So like anything that can have support for ALSA and Jack, I'm going to want those so I can actually have audio. X for graphics. I'm pretty sure the aqua use flag is just masked, masked by default on anything other than a Mac, but for some reason I decided to just <laughs> make really, really sure that it's never going to be set. Then I have ZSH and bash completion, because ZSH is my main login shell, and I still have bash set as the login shell for the root user. No systemd or pulse audio. I don't actually have like some religious objection to pulse audio. I just wanted to see if I could go without it. And doing fine so far. Then just e -log ND just to make sure that anything that can make use of any of its capabilities does. Then video cards, just so the stuff that uses the GPU at all knows what it's working with. For Intel integrated, just go to the Gen2 wiki page for Intel and that should tell you for each CPU generation what you want to put here. So it'll generally be Intel and either i9-65 or i9-15 and obviously this will be a hundred percent different for AMD or Nvidia and those are the only ones that really need to be touched on. So next step, one thing that you're probably going to want to do with the package manager is actually install packages. So generally the three steps I take. First do emerge dash dash search the package name. So I'm gonna look for CWM. And I largely do this partly to make sure that it's in either the default repos or one of the overlays that I have added and partly just in case it has a weird name or anything. So in this case I found at x11wm slash cwm and if there's a package of the same name in another category, which for this there isn't, then you would need the complete atom to install it. So as root emerge x11wm slash cwm. Since this isn't ambiguous, do as emerge cwm would do the job just fine, but before actually installing it, I like to do a little pretend, and 
if you don't have verbose as one of your default makeups, that would be important here too. And I do the pretend first just to see what it pulls in and what use flags it has, just so I know if I need to change them. And in this case, there aren't any use flags available, but I'm going to just pretend another package just so that you can see what it would look like. So for Awesome WM, it pulls in lib xgg baster and lgi has these use flags dependencies have these use flags so if i wanted to change any of them i would make a file in slash etsy slash portage slash package dot use and i would just call the file awesome there are also tools that exist to streamline this. I just personally prefer making the file myself. Yeah, so then once you've made sure that you're cool with all the dependencies and use flags, just using your preferred method to get root privileges, emerge whatever package you want to install, put in your password if you're using do as or sudo, if you're using su, then you're already root. And then, since I have ask set, it confirms that I want to install it, which, yes, I do. And I don't know how long CWM will take to build, so I'm just going to pause recording until it's done. Okay, CWM actually took, like, no time at all, so I probably could have just not paused. But anyway, next up, another common thing you'll want to do with the package manager is remove packages and in a lot of distros there's just a flag that you pass the package manager that'll just immediately remove the package and anything that depends on it so like pacman-r apt remove whatever and flags to immediately remove it do exist for portage but they're not recommended because they don't actually check dependencies in both directions. So Portage will not stop you from just removing something that other packages depend on, completely breaking those other packages in the process. So the recommended way is to emerge dash dash deselect whatever the package is I'm just going to deselect Skippy because I don't actually use it. And I don't remember whether this is just because I have ask as one of my default emerge options or not, but it is asking first to make sure that I want to deselect it. So yes. And what this does is next time I run a depth clean, which I will later in this video, assuming nothing depends on Skippy, which I don't think anything does, it'll remove that and anything it pulls in as a dependency that nothing else depends on. So then next up is updating packages. So first step for this, the old fashioned way is emerge dash dash sync, but nowadays that just kind of calls the newer way behind the scenes. The newer way being emaint. I use the old fashioned way, so I'm just looking at my notes to remember what it is. Sync dash A. And then just give it a sec to refresh keys. It'll confirm that you want to sync. And one note with this is that. A lot of mirrors will get upset if you're consistently syncing more than once a day. So I usually do it like weekly. And from what I hear, there are, there are people who do just fine doing it even less often, like every couple of weeks or every month. So yeah, this isn't Arch. You don't need to update every single day. But 
it's been long enough since I updated that I'll just sync it. And at least on my machine, this takes a bit, so I'm going to pause recording till it's done. Okay, so for me, all of them succeeded. Return code zero. If any of them fail, like, more so due to network issues. Like, I have kind of an unreliable wireless card, so sometimes one or more of the later ones will fail. Then you can just emaint sync dash r and then just whatever repo failed. But again, they've succeeded, so I don't really need to do that. So then, now that all the overlays and such are up to date, next up is actually updating packages. So, emerge dash dash update self-explanatory dash dash deep so it looks through the whole dependency tree instead of just like immediate dependencies of stuff in the set that we're going to specify later dash dash new use so that if something is still the same version that you change use flags or the profile changed use flags for it, it'll still reinstall it. Dash dash ask is good if you don't already have that set in your make.conf. And then at world, the world set is a combination of the system set, which is just required base packages for the system did not collapse on itself, and also the selected set, which is things that you've specifically installed. So like, with the awesome window manager example earlier, if I'd installed that, awesome would be in the selected set, the two packages it was pulling in as dependencies would not be. So, once you got all that typed out, just hit enter. Put in your password again if you're using do as or sudo. If you're using su for the whole thing, then you're already root, so there isn't a problem. Then it can take a sec to calculate dependencies, especially on a potato, so I might end up fast forwarding some of this. Actually, scratch that, I'll probably just fast forward most of this. Now, ignore all this red up at the top, that's just something weird in one of the overlays I have. So, it's good to look over what's updating, what use flags it has, like, just make sure everything looks good. Pay special attention, if you have color on, to yellow and green use flags, because those are typically ones that have changed, and I forgot that persist is masked by default. I usually just use a script to update everything that changes the profile every time to unmask that, so I'm gonna pause recording for just a sec while I fix that. Okay, so one thing I forgot to mention before is that you do need the dash dash verbose flag to actually have it show use flags, but anyway, once you got a feel for what's updating or reinstalling and are okay with the use flags, you can either hit Y and then hit enter or just hit enter at default to yes. And then this could take a while depending on how much you have to update and what you have to update. Like for instance, Firefox or the Rust compiler or something is going to take 
longer than a small window manager like CWM. It'll also depend on your hardware. So, just to not waste too much Morial's time, I'm gonna stop recording. Actually, do I even have- it? yeah, I do have something after this, so I'm just gonna stop recording until this is done going. Okay, so after a successful update, it'll tell you exactly what to run next, but I'm just gonna say it anyway. So run emerge dash dash step clean and generally couldn't hurt to add dash dash ask as well, just so it actually makes sure that you want to remove everything it's about to remove. So what depth clean does is it just sort of looks through what you have installed, looking for anything that's not part of the world group or a dependency of part of the world group. So since I deselected Skippy, it's selected for removal. If it pulled in any dependencies that nothing else depended on, those would be on this list too. It also would have like former dependencies. So if the last version of something you just updated depended on something and the new version you updated to doesn't depend on that thing, that thing would be removed too. So since I have ask as one of my default options, it is asking first. And even when you say yes, it still gives you a countdown so that you can cancel it. So yeah, it's generally recommended to run this after any update and only after updates. So yeah, that's about it for this video. Have a nice rest of your day.